Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. As you saw by the title today, we're going to be talking about fire skinks and what they eat. This video is not going to be a comprehensive care video. If you're interested in that, I will include it up here somewhere as well as at the end of this video and if I remember in the links below. Again, this video is not going to be about their care extensively. It is just going to be an in-depth look at what they eat. So I did cover what they eat in the care video if you saw it already, but this is just going to be a little bit more in-depth. Before we get started, I ask that you subscribe, hit the notification bell just so that you'll be alerted of when I post more care videos but aside from that let's go ahead and get started Roku is my fire skink who I've had now for almost a year I love him to death but he hates me so it is a love-hate relationship for sure <laughs> hate on his end, love on my end. And because I've had him for almost a year, I feel pretty confident letting you guys know exactly what I feed him. And he gets quite a variety of different insects, so I want to cover all of them in this video, as well as some that you can offer that I don't offer. So fire skinks are insectivores, which means that they eat insects. And in my experience, they will eat pretty much any insect you offer, as long as it's moving. I can only speak about Roku, my fire skink, but he likes everything I've offered to him thus far. I have a list right here that I'm gonna read right off of, just so I can make sure I cover them all, but you can offer your fire skink appropriately sized dubia roaches, mealworms, superworms, hornworms, crickets, and the occasional waxworm. These are all foods I've offered except crickets. I don't offer crickets. I'm sure you could probably also offer phoenix worms, but I've never offered those, or like butter worms, I've never offered those either. So I'm sure those are things you can offer since they are insectivores, but I have only personally offered dubia roaches, mealworms, superworms, hornworms, and the occasional waxworm. I have found that he likes all of these foods and will eat them readily. I literally, as long as it's moving in his bowl, he will eat it. So what do I mean when I say appropriately sized? You're going to want to offer food that is not wider than the space between your fire skink's eyes. And if you get a fire skink as a baby, the food you're gonna be offering them is going to be smaller, obviously, than the food that you offer when they are full grown. Full grown fire skinks are pretty sizable, so they can eat a wide variety of larger insects than they can when they are smaller. So a juvenile or still growing fire skink can eat dubia roaches like the nymphs or the smaller ones they can eat mealworms they can eat waxworms and they can eat hornworms that have not grown to their full capacity yet so if you don't know hornworms aren't always those big scary looking green caterpillars they start out like this big and you can offer really tiny ones to all sorts of animals uh, you just have to do it before they get big so the reason that you don't want to offer food that is wider than the space between their eyes is because that's generally the size of their throat and so if you offer food that is bigger than the space between their eyes, they may have a hard time swallowing it. If you want to avoid the risk of suffocation from their food or a choking hazard, then that would be the way to go. Offer something smaller than the space between your reptile's eyes. Like I said, I offer my skink food from a bowl and it's like a little ceramic bowl that I actually got from the cat section of a store. Like it's a cat food bowl, like a little tiny one. It's like this big, but I wanted something that was like big enough that he could like get into, but was still like also small enough he could get into. So like something that was wide but shallow but also that wasn't going to be too shallow for the insects to crawl out so it's just like this cute little little ceramic bowl and the ceramic is great because it's a smooth surface that insects can't climb out of so sometimes you'll notice with resin bowls like if you get them at like a pet store they're made of resin they look like little rocky and stuff sometimes the insects can crawl right out of there because there's grip to it so if you offer them in a ceramic bowl it's not easy for them to get out but the reason that i bowl feed my fire skink is because fire skinks are notoriously shy and they often will not eat in front of their human so i put food in roku's enclosure like at like 1 a.m. when I'm doing pet room chores and he eats around the time that the lights come on which is around like 7 or 8 a.m. and so he'll come out and he'll eat and he'll bask and all the time that I'm not in the room so I offer food at night because it's too early in the morning like for me to come in here and if he hears me in here he won't eat so I offer the food at night so that he will eat it in the morning now if your skink is growing you're gonna want to offer food daily or even just like daily with a couple skip days a week um, because they are growing so they need that protein to to grow properly and healthily and if it's a full-grown skink you only have to feed them two to three times a week because it's difficult to tell how much to feed a skink because you don't get to see them eat like the typical rule of thumb is to give like I don't know anywhere from like five to ten minutes of what an animal will eat freely in that time or what a reptile will eat freely in that time but because a fire skink is so shy you kind of just have to guess so I feed like whatever I think would be a substantial meal and because I've been keeping reptiles that's easier for me to understand understand than someone who's just getting into fire skinks. I'll try to break it down into like how much I offer in a sitting. So if I'm offering mealworms, I offer like 
10 or 15 mealworms. By the way, my skink is like a year old almost. Um, so he's not full grown yet, but he's like a, a lot bigger than he was when he was a baby. Um, so I offer like 10 to 15 mealworms in a sitting, or I'll offer two sizable superworms, or I will offer like five medium like little tiny they're not like the baby nymph little doobie roaches but they're not the huge scary ones so like around this size so maybe like half inch doobie roaches but i'll offer like four or five of those in a bowl and some days he doesn't eat and that's just his personal preference and other days he eats everything in the bowl so he's not a picky eater but he is in brumation a little bit right now so he's like sometimes eating and sometimes not brumation for those who don't know is basically where your reptile eats less in the winter and can also be less active I'll include a video up here about it. It's nothing to worry about. It's completely natural for reptiles to do, but it's no fun for a reptile keeper. But anyways, you want to make sure that any insect you're offering to your fire skink is going to be gut loaded. Gut loading is the process by which you offer healthy vegetables and fruits to the insects 48 hours before you offer the insects to your lizard or whatever animal you're offering to, in this case a fire skink, because you want to make sure that the insect is going to be full of vitamins and full of nutrients before you offer it off to your animal. If you are offering insects that are not properly gut loaded or have not been gut loaded at all, your fire skink is going to be missing out on that nutrients, on those really great nutrients that could be offered by gut loading. So that's definitely something you're going to want to do. So to gut load my insects, I use carrots, I use squash, I'll use broccoli, I'll use turnip greens, I'll use um, apples, and I'll use oranges. There's a lot of different foods that you can offer to the insects to offer nutrients. So if you are offering a variety of fruits and vegetables to your insects, your fire skink is going to be getting the best variety from those fruits and vegetables in their bodies as well. And speaking of variety, something I forgot to mention earlier is that you want to offer a variety of insects. So like I said, I feed mine doobie roaches, mealworms, superworms, hornworms, and the occasional waxworm. What you wanna do is offer those over time. So like sometimes offer doobie roaches, sometimes offer crickets, sometimes offer mealworms, sometimes offer superworms. You don't just wanna offer one food because it's gonna make your fire skink miss out on the opportunity for nutrients from other sources. So one more thing we have to cover about the insects that you offer your fire skink is that they have to be dusted in a calcium D3 and multivitamin supplement. So I personally use Rapashi Calcium Plus. How much you dust the insects depends on if you're using UVB or not. So I recommend using UVB for fire skinks because they are a diurnal species. And even if they are burrowed a lot, I have noticed that my fire skink will bask in the morning and he will bask like under his uh, mercury vapor bulb. It's a 70 watt one, so it puts out heat and it puts out UVB. So I definitely recommend doing that. For my fire skink, because he has UVB, I dust his food every other feeding to every two feedings. And like I said, I dust with Rapashi Calcium Plus, which is calcium D3 and a multivitamin. If you don't offer UVB, you are going to have to dust with calcium and D3 more often. Last thing I want to address before closing out this video is that you should not, I repeat, you should not catch insects out of the wild and feed them to your fire skink. You should only be offering captive bred insects because you don't know what insects in the wild might have that they can pass on to your fire skink. So you don't want to do that, it's not safe. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning more about what you should feed your fire skink and what I feed my fire skink. If this video was helpful, leave a like. And if you want to, please subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'd love to have you here. Please also check the links below for social media, a Patreon, a donation link, merchandise, an email you can contact me at, all kinds of stuff. And with all that said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. So it is Eco Earth Day. Sorry if my voice sounds funny, by the way. I think I'm getting under the weather, but it's Eco Earth Day here at the pet room or here in the pet room. And that means that I'm gonna have to disturb Roku to moisten his Eco Earth, which he absolutely hates. But I wanted to get a shot of him since I only get to see him a couple times a month. And oh, there he is already. That was fast. I'm sorry, Bubba. Okay, 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 okay. Relax. It's okay. I know. Oh, okay, okay. All right, <laughs> relax, Bubba, relax. How many times do I got to prove I'm not here to hurt you? Hmm? That's weird. Hi, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Oh, don't freak out, it's okay. 
you're in good hands. I have never hurt you. Oh God, okay, well, I don't want you to jump out the side of the door, so. You can be a little wild. Because if you escape, I don't know if I'll be able to get you, because you are fast. I've been waiting until he gets a lot bigger to handle him, because they're easier to handle and they calm down a bit when they get older. But um, he's not full grown yet. He's like, got a lot of growing to do. So. Like you see moving around in the soil. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up and moisten it, and then I'll show you guys later when it's all done. I decided to get a little bit closer for you guys to see how big he's gotten. He was an itty bitty baby when I got him, like almost a year ago. Be like maybe four months until I got him. Three months actually. All right, buddy. You're looking handsome. Okay. I'm gonna stop recording so I can get back to cleaning this. I think you guys actually got to see a lot more of him than you ever have on this channel. Um, so you're welcome for that. It's okay, I'm not gonna hurt you. It's okay, I'm not gonna hurt you. Beautiful boy or girl. <laughs> okay, bye Roku. So this is the enclosure all done. Obviously his bottom hide is like super hidden by this plant, which is the purpose, um, because they don't like being seen that often. Plant, the other hide I showed you, uh, water bowl, food bowl, which has eco earth in it, but won't later when I feed him. And there's this cave, and that little thing I showed you earlier. Uh, plant and plant, and Roku is still out. Why? I'm not sure, but I'm gonna leave him be so he can get comfortable. <laughs>